Jonathan Vilma played the NFL for a decade. He was a three-time Pro Bowler, and we're lucky enough to have him at Fox Sports as an NFL analyst, and he is now joining us live. So, you know, this is interesting to me. So I looked at Jameis Winston video. Joy was doing a story, and I looked at the video, and I swear to God he's lost 25 pounds. And I, that tells me, oh, Jameis is all in on this thing. He understands things didn't go well in Tampa. I get a second chance here. You're really connected to the Saints. You played there for years. What are you hearing? What is your gut feeling on what you'll see from Jameis Winston? You'll see a, a much improved Jameis Winston from his uh, Buccaneer days. And, you know, I go to the best teammate I ever had in Drew Brees. Uh, he was the best teammate in the way he prepared, the way he competed in practice, the way that he trusted the process. He always talked about the process and he was like a robot day in and day out. So Jameis Winston goes from the Bucks, where he had no leadership, no guidance, no one to look up to by example and say, oh, this is how I'm supposed to practice. This is how I'm supposed to prepare. This is how I'm supposed to watch film. And this is how I'm supposed to enter and talk to my receivers, etc. He now goes over to the Saints and he has not only a player, he has a head coach as well that you look at both and say, oh, OK, I get it. This is how I'm supposed to do it. And it's showing up in the way he looks. He looks physically fit, physically ready to go. And it's going to show up in the way he plays. Yeah, I mean, look at him right now, that video. He does not. It, if, yeah, he looks great. If somebody told you that wasn't Jameis Winston, you would not think that's yeah. Jameis Winston. He's always been a little pudding. He was always a, a little soft. He looked, you know. Not a little pudgy, that's all. Just, that's right. You know, he, had, he had the baby fat still on. That's the right. Baby fat. So it, good for him. Now, um, there's a story out of Philadelphia that the practices have been terrible. And it's manifesting itself. The team plays bad on Sunday. And it's interesting because Charles Barkley was a legendarily bad practice player. But he was a great player. Clyde Drexler, who legendarily hated practice, but was a great player. I'm not sure if that works in the NFL. Do you have to be a great practice team or player to be a great team, Jonathan? You have to practice great as a team to be a great team. You don't have to have everyone as a great practice player. You, I've been around players that were, we used to call them Wednesday All-Americans, Thursday <laughs> All-Americans, practice squad All-Americans, because they were tremendous in practice. They'd go extra hard, rip the ball out, you know, give 110%, and then, you know, in the game, you're just like, what happened? You, where, where'd you go? And I, I've had guys that they weren't necessarily bad practice players, and to be specific, they knew exactly what they wanted to work on in practice. And then that's what they worked on. Everything else, they were like, that's that's not what I need right now. What I need is to focus on X, Y, and Z. I've, and particularly, it used to be corners like, uh, on the defensive side where corners are like, I need to see the route. Show me the route and how this guy is going to run the route. I need to see that. Everything else, I'm good with, you know, running to the ball and all that stuff. And I've had guys like that where you say, okay, leave him be. And he goes out and he performs well. The issue with Carson Wentz is that he's the quarterback. The quarterback is not afforded the luxury of being able to act like a cornerback, not able to act like a wide receiver. Quarterbacks, by nature, they have the ball all the time. They're the, they have, aside from the center, they have the ball the most. They have to have the best practice habits, and they have to set the tone, period. There's no way around it. So if he has practice habits that are similar to a position player, that's a problem. That's a big problem. Yeah, that's great. Great perspective. Jonathan Vilma joining us. He will have Cowboys-Vikings. I'll get to that in a second. You had the Steelers um, against Joe Burrow and the Bengals. So first of all, Give me your thoughts, and you can do both here in, in one question. Your thoughts on the Steelers' defense and on rookie Joe Burrow. What did you see? I'll go first with rookie Joe Burrow, who looked outstanding leading up to the game. Most impressive, Two most impressive things about Joe Burrow was his accuracy and his ability to extend the downs. At LSU, he wasn't getting hit a lot, so I didn't realize he was you know, very able and very mobile so when you take a hit, you bounce off it, extend it down and, and you know, throw down the field. Uh, the accuracy has been very impressive and it's very different than completion percentage because I'm talking about leading a receiver uh, and throwing a receiver open, not just, OK, I throw it to the to the flat route 10 times in a game. And yeah, those are easy completions and it boosts my completion percentage. I'm talking about the tight windows that weren't necessarily there at LSU. Now they're here in the NFL. and He's still completing them at a high level. 
uh, from the Steelers defense. They had a very nice wake up call and were very fortunate to get out of that Cowboys game because the Cowboys ran all over them. Uh, frankly, made them look like a JV team. And if it weren't for the turnovers in that Cowboys game, the Steelers lose. So they they had a wake up call. And like any really good team, they responded. They responded against who I just said is a very good quarterback. He doesn't play like a rookie in Joe Burrow. They made him look like a rookie. The defense was outstanding. The only issue with the Steelers right now is that they need to run the football. Yeah. The, they're not running the football well. And that's not going to travel when you start playing the better teams, Kansas City's of the world, Baltimore. Later on in the year, they have them twice. They're going to have to step up in the run game. Yeah, that, that's actually a great point, is that I've been a, very much a doubter on the Steelers. I know they're good, but they're not running the football. And if you can't run the football, that means Patrick Mahomes gets two more possessions and you're not beating Patrick Mahomes unless you're limited into eight possessions, not ten. Uh, Jonathan Vilma is joining us. So you have this, you have the Vikings and the Cowboys, and I think the Vikings are now the most underrated team in the league. Um, they remind me of the Raiders. Their quarterback's good, but doesn't take chances. They run the hell out of the football. They're not very good defensively. Maybe one good pass rusher and one good linebacker. But I think Minnesota is a real football team that just happened to lose two one-point games, so everybody buries them. You're looking at tape now on the Vikings. Do you see a team that could win a playoff game? What do you see from them? Because their record's not good. They could definitely win a playoff game. And, you know, I look over at the NFC East and say, well, if the Vikings get a playoff spot, they're going to most likely face the, the winner in the, in the NFC East, excuse me, if I said AFC, in the NFC East. Um, they can definitely win that game. Uh, on film, what I see is a team that is a throwback team. Uh, this is the first offense I'm watching. And I told uh, my producers and I told Kenny Albert, Shannon Spake, my partners, said this is the first offense that I've seen this year that really wants to test your manhood. They are going to go. They have the fullback. They have the running back. They have the offensive line. They don't care if you have eight guys in the box. They don't care if you blitz. They are going to test how tough you are. Now, how fast, now how athletic can you run down my wide receivers? No, they want to see you in the box if you're going to tackle and if you're going to tackle for 60 minutes. So I love any team that has that mentality and frankly, the players that have bought into that mentality. It took a few games. You mentioned they lost by a point twice, but it took a few games for them to really say, OK, this is our identity. This is who we are. And you have that going in late into the season. They already beat the best team in the North in Green Bay that after they lost to him in the first, in the season opener. So now you take that into the rest of the season that really bodes well. And it's going to be a challenge for anybody that's going to face the Minnesota Vikings in that rushing attack. Uh, by the way, uh, you were a great linebacker, multiple your NFC defensive rookie of the year. Um, <laughs> and no, Ray Lewis was a great linebacker. Well, I, I was, pretty good yeah well you okay you're <laughs> humble but Ray Lewis is a great good linebacker so I'm sure there was a running back or two in your career that made you miss but I watch Kyler Murray and I think was there ever a quarterback that made you miss because Kyler Murray oh yeah I sometimes I'm like is he the best running back since Barry Sanders <laughs> I mean what, what do you see when you see Kyler Murray uh, I see a great problem that I don't have to deal with. <laughs> That's what I see. <laughs> I mean, he, he's just so slippery, and he reminds me of uh, not really a running back. He reminds me of Kevin Falk from the New England Patriots. Yeah. When I had the unfortunate uh, pleasure of having to play him twice a year in my Jets days, and it, it was the worst because you have to have this guy one-on-one, -on -one and it was similar to – Kyler Murray, where it was always in space. Kevin Falk on third down, he comes in, they throw him, you know, option route, or they're, they're doing a screen, or they're doing something where when it's in space, it's it's almost impossible to tackle this guy. And so I'm watching Kyler Murray, and I'm saying it's frankly unfair to all the defenders because you always get them in space as opposed to, you know, running backs, you can kind of corral them, and, and you can figure out everyone's fits and schemes. But, you know, going against Kyler Murray, God, I'm, I'm just – I'm so glad I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> Jeez. He, he's awesome. <laughs> he's awesome. He is. Cowboys, Vikings, Jonathan Vilma, Fox Sports. Good seeing you, bud. Thanks for coming on the show. You too, Colin. Take care. All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.